Suma's POV. The canopy above us rushed past as we flew. Half an hour had passed since Odin's, Rue and I split from the rest of the team to begin searching. As we went, I had given regular updates to Jake, who gave them to the captain. Odin's was far to my left, and Rue was flying ahead of us and to the right. Our search was slow, but thorough. We have not found any signs of the other team yet, I said to Jake over our private connection. Alright, it's been long enough. We're going to start the display now, he said. Jake is going to start his display now, I said to the others. They needed to know so that they would not think it was from the other team. A moment later, we all felt a sudden burst of magic coming from the north of us. Wow, Rue said, surprised, looking towards the direction of the manor. That's all from one familiar? You know, I have noticed this before, but it is quite obvious now. Jake's manner feels... strange, Odin said. I can't tell with all of them, but I always notice it when he casts his railgun spell during drills. Odin's! Rue snapped. I am not trying to be rude, I just... Odin started, but I interrupted him. I understand. Jake's manner does feel... different than most. I noticed it myself years ago. Over time, I have simply grown... accustomed to it. Look, I think you can see the edge of his display over the canopy in the distance, Rue said. We need to focus. Has anyone seen anything yet? I asked, shifting the conversation. Displays are not easy, and producing one requires giving in to an assortment of uncomfortable emotions. So the thought of Jake doing so, especially with everything he has gone through recently, was an unpleasant thought. Nothing yet. Nothing here either, they both reported. Minutes later, the sounds of fighting rang out in the distance. It sounds like the trap worked. Rue said. And we still have not found any signs of the other team, I sighed, worrying about Jake. Should we spread out? It would make the search faster, Odin suggested. No, it would defeat the purpose of having me here. We need to have instant communication between the groups, I said. After a short time, the fighting stopped, and the overwhelming feeling of Jake's manner faded away. Did the trap work? I asked Jake for our connection, and our group stopped flying for a moment, and landed among the tree branches to rest. Yes and no, he answered. Jake's POV We have not found any signs of the other team yet, Suma said. Still nothing, I told to the captain. Then we will begin your display, Captain Giguales said. All right, it's been long enough. We're going to start the display now, I told Suma, and ended the connection. According to Odin's, a display is strongest when you're angry. So after he taught me to keep one stable, he said I needed to keep myself upset. Easy, I thought. With everything that's happened lately, I knew exactly what to think about to get myself angry. The only hard part will be choosing which one from the obscenely long list. Getting stuck in this world, my mum, the stupid dragon... Zachariah nearly blowing up my head, getting body snatched, those arrogant nobles, the... Before I could finish my thoughts, Lieutenant Datahu's voice snapped me out of it. Well, that's an unpleasant feeling. I opened my eyes and realised the display had already started, and we were standing in a massive cloud of blue and purple fog. Just like when Sumer and I were attacked by those nobles and his wyvern. Quite, the captain agreed. Both were perched nearby, inside the fog. They seemed uncomfortable, and the natural sparkle the captain had even seemed duller. Of course, the lieutenant barely sparkled, so that was nothing new. I looked for Nine, but his feathers were basically the same colour as the fog, so it took me a minute to spot him, especially since he was the only Numi I knew that didn't possess that sparkle. After a moment, I found him off to the side, looking very uneasy. What's wrong? I asked. Do not worry about us, Sentinel. We will be fine. Focus on keeping the display up and we will hide, the lieutenant said, and flew away into the trees. I lost Nine quickly, but saw the captain hide under an outcropping of tree roots before disappearing. They'd been warned beforehand about the inversion effect, so they knew what to expect, but I didn't think they'd get sick from it. 
With them gone, I just focused on maintaining the display, which meant focusing on staying angry. It was weird, after all these months, I thought I'd just gone numb to it, but laying it all out in my mind, one after the other, I was furious all over again. Like it had just happened yesterday. Without knowing how much time had passed, but it somehow still felt like an instant, and an eternity, I heard a voice I didn't recognise yell, By the dragons! Whoever it was, they sounded pretty surprised. Looking around to find them, I realised the fog had gotten so thick that you couldn't see more than a metre away, let alone find a voice in it. A sun-bright flash above me erupted, and I heard a scream, followed quickly by the thump of something hitting the ground. It's an ambush! Just like the captain said! Two more voices yelled. All of this was followed up with more flashes. They're not going down! A sudden crack of thunder echoed out, and another thump fell behind me. I looked around, and saw a Nume laying in the blue grass. After confirming he was still alive, just knocked unconscious, I refocused on maintaining the display. But it became a lot harder to do with the sounds of battle all around you. There you are, a voice above me said. I looked up and saw a Nume dive bombing straight for me. Just before I had the chance to cast a spell, one of the roots of a nearby tree shot out of the ground and slammed into him. He hit the ground with a thud. Without warning, Nine flew past me, checked the Nume, then disappeared back into the fog. We are clear, the captain's voice yelled. You can stop your display. Is everyone alright? I yelled, finally letting myself calm down. Cold, Nine said. They kept using fire magic. Good to know lightning cannot be inverted, Lieutenant Detahu said, just as the fog started to fade. They all landed beside me, each on different perches made from twisted vines and roots, though I am surprised we do not encounter more resistance. They would have known, the captain said, then stopped without warning, and looked off in the distance. Just as I looked, I felt a surge of pain and fell down. Ugh! I yelped and my body seized up. With that, I blacked out. I don't know how long it was before I woke up again, but when I did, Nine was sitting on my chest. You're out, he said, then motioned with a wing to a nearby tree. You can go sit with the others if you want. What happened? I asked, confused. The other team's captain hit you with a bolt of lightning, then flew off. Captain Guguales chased after him, but he has not come back yet. I looked over to the tree that Nine had pointed at, and saw several Nume perched on the branches. Some were just watching. Others were receiving medical attention from healers. Did we win? I asked, not yet wanting to move. We took out most of their team with our trap. All that is left is their captain and one private. Oh, did we lose anyone? Just you. I guess that's good. Are you not going to get up? Nine asked. In a minute, I groaned. After about five minutes of working the stiffness out of my body, I finally got up. Just in time to see the captain fly overhead and land next to Lieutenant Datahu. I walked over to the tree, and one of the new may cast a healing spell on me. A moment later, the captain flew over and landed in front of me. How are you feeling? he asked. Better. Did you get the last of them? No, I was defeated. While fighting their captain, the private landed a hit on me. It is up to the others now, Captain Guguales said. Did the trap work? Suma's voice suddenly asked over our connection. Yes and no, I answered. <laughs>